Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about home theater acoustics, why you should use absorb absorption first before diffusion. A lot of people <laughs> flip those around, I get it. Diffusers are cool, they look neat, um, but it's a tool and you have to use that tool correctly. It's like you want to use a regular screwdriver for a regular screw or a Phillips for a Phillips screw. You want to make sure that you're using the right tool for the job. And diffusion has a lot of requirements, and we're going to talk about some of those today. What is a home theater? It's all about car crashes and explosions, because when you're designing a room, you always have to design for the biggest energy source in the room. And with theater, it's always low frequency, right? Car crashes, explosions, all kinds of issues that go on. And since the room only sees energy, it's going to react to the frequency and the amplitude of that energy. So got large amounts of low frequency energy, long wavelengths. And most of our rooms are really small. And most of us put too much energy in those small rooms. And sometimes I wonder what's going on at, in a lot of the rooms that I see. I, I saw a room the other day with 14 channels and it had nine foot dimensions. I don't know how you put that much energy in, in such a small dimension because it's not going to fit. Let's look at some of the wavelength lengths, 30, 30, 30 hertz, 35 feet, 40 hertz, 28 foot, 50 hertz, 23 feet. Who's got rooms that long? Most people don't, see? So low frequency energy then goes through the wall, reflects back into the room, or is absorbed. Those are the three things that happen. So Room size and volume does not support most of these wavelengths, most of these low frequency wavelengths. So when that happens, we all know what happens. The room loads. When it loads, you get room modes, which is distortion. And that distortion can exaggerate certain frequencies, can attenuate to the point where you don't hear anything at all. 60 cycles is a big one. Uh, we see a lot in... Uh, Listening environments uh, seems to be a problematic frequency, mainly due to ceiling heights. So we see a lot of uh, issues there. So that's the pressure side of it. That's the low frequency side of it. Then we got the reflection management side. Because it's always a balance between the energy coming out of your speakers, no matter how many channels. It works for sides, rears, even these new ceiling speakers. It's always a relationship between the direct energy from the speaker and the reflected energy from the room. That's how you have to think about it. If you draw a straight line out of your speaker and these are the reflections from the room, as they cross the direct energy, this is distortion. Speech intelligibility gets impacted. Dialogue, you'll have a car crash and then you'll have dialogue right after it. You won't even be able to hear it. Uh, we get calls all the time, people say, well, we have car crashes and explosions. I'm always turning to the person next to me who sits next to me and say, what did they say? Well, that shouldn't happen. It's too much energy. The room is not managing it correctly because you don't have the proper absorption to do that. So we have to use absorption to manage all of these pressure and reflection issues. So it's always absorption first when it comes to theaters. You got to manage the pressure and the reflections. You got to get them into a certain time window, we call it. So that takes absorption. And that's a process that we have to be very cognizant about before we're going to use diffusion. Diffusion technology has requirements. And let's walk through those. They're technical, but I want you to understand if you don't take anything away from this video, I want you to take away the fact that diffusion is a tool that is very specific in its application. It's a wonderful tool. We've been using it for 30 plus years. But it took us a long time to figure out how to use it correctly. And one of the first things that you have to have when you're doing it is no spatial irregularities in frequency response. So you don't want this in your frequency response. You want more of this. You want smooth frequency response. You don't want peaks and dips and all of that going on. So the bottom line here is you got to have no spatial irregulars in response. Keep it as smooth as you can get it. It takes a lot of surface area coverage. There can't be 
The decay rate must be smooth. Everything has to be smooth when you're using diffusion. Because diffusion acts like a magnifying glass. It will accentuate and, and show you where your problems are that you didn't treat. And you can't have that because the goal of diffusion is to improve resolution and make the room sound larger. So you don't want to give it a task it can't perform. It'll just, you know, fight you and make things worse. And diffusers are not cheap. Uh, decay rate in all room locations must be the same. So when your energy strikes, the RT30 and 60 decay times must be the same in all room locations. Reverb must be the same in all locations if you're going to use diffusion. So lots of qualifications there. Only absorption can meet these requirements. It's the only way. We only have two things, right? Absorption and diffusion. So you have to get absorption first and get all of these criteria met through absorption before you can apply diffusion. Okay? So we got break that absorption down. We got lows, mids, and high, right? That's how we have to do it. Remember the acronym TAP, type, amount, and position. You got to use the right type of treatment for low frequency and the right type of treatment for middle and high frequency. They're both different and they're both different treatments. And there's not one that'll do both. I don't care what these other companies tell you. You can't use foam for low frequency absorption. You got to use the proper tool for the job, right? Okay. What else do we have? Low frequency pressure. We have three sources that we can go to, three tools we can use. Diaphragmatic, membrane, and Hemholtz. We've gone through this many, many times, but of the three, diaphragmatic is the most powerful. That's the one we use. It's also very heavy, but the performance per square foot cannot be beat or even get close to with membrane and Hemholtz. So we like diaphragmatic. It's broadband. It covers a broad uh, range of frequencies. So you, one product at one location can do a lot in terms of frequency and amplitude. So amount, we always have to have enough about it, right? And the position, where do we put it? We got to make sure we know each wall has a different frequency and amplitude problem. So we have to adjust our treatment type to that wall location. Maybe one wall is 40 hertz. Maybe one wall is 50. Maybe one wall is 60. Maybe floor to ceiling is a completely different situation. We see floor to ceiling problems all the time at 50, 60, 70, 80 cycles. And that's because of the distance in the ceiling height. That floor to ceiling dimension is the worst. It's the shortest. Produces a lot of problems and nobody ever talks about that. So the bottom line here is you got to use the right technology to deal with the problem. Remember, we have three sound fields in a room. We have floor to ceiling, sidewall to sidewall, and front to rear. So if you're looking at a room, you got this, you got this, and then you got this, right? So you got to have all of those sound fields managed correctly. One of the ways you can do that is with our CAW, our carbon absorbing wall. There's a process where we turn the whole wall into a low frequency absorber. And the nice thing about the CAW is that we can tune the wall every 14 and a half inches because that's the distance between stud space. With 16 inch uh, on center studs, we got about a 14 and a quarter distance between those studs. And when we put our carbon filters in there, we can control the thickness of the filter, which controls the rate of absorption. The level is determined by how deep the cavity is, how deep the sud space is, but how much energy we get is controlled by the carbon filter we put inside. Sometimes our carbon filters are three inches deep, sometimes four, sometimes five. They vary between three and five depending on the problem. But when you're designing a room and you have the ability to manage the energy in each stud space, Wow, what a powerful tool because you turn the whole wall into an absorber. And more importantly, you turn the whole wall into an absorber that's specific for the problems that the dimensions of the room are going to produce with low frequency energy. 
So we have really smooth responses in our room because we get the whole room working for us. We turn the whole room into a, an acoustical tool, if you will. And that's what you have to do first because diffusion will make your room sound worse if you don't meet these. If your decay rates aren't uniform, here's another one. If your reverberation times are not uniform throughout the whole room, diffusion will make things really sound horrible. So remember, diffusers act like a magnifying glass. So you got to have your T's crossed and your I's dotted if you're going to use diffusion. But once you use it, two things always happen. It's funny because I get a lot of calls from people that, oh, Dennis, the diffusion's amazing. And they always have two things that go on. They regret that they didn't do it sooner and they'll never live without it again. It's a really powerful tool because we're so used to being in our rooms. We're so used to listening in our rooms. What we don't realize is that the room boundary surfaces have such a huge impact on what we hear in the room. So when you put diffusion on, let's say, the front and the rear wall in two channel listening rooms, people are, I can't even believe I'm in the same room. I, I, I think I've gotten a new room. I always tell people it's like the equivalent of getting a new amp, new speakers, and new cables all at once when you put diffusion in your room. You won't believe it. You won't believe the difference. And I know there's many of you out there that have, are thinking about diffusion. Don't wait. Take the leap. It's worth the effort. It's probably the single biggest factor in enjoying a small room is a, a diffusion that's properly applied because you can actually make a, a small room sound much larger with diffusion. But you have to have all the requirements of diffusion met first and foremost before you introduce it, because any of these that aren't met, these criteria for diffusion that aren't met and satisfied and treated, the diffuser will point them out to you. You'll hear them. And as you increase the resolution of the room, every surface that you hear becomes more pronounced if it's not treated correctly. So home theater acoustics, all about pressure, all about energy, and the room only sees energy. Diffusion really sees the energy. So we have to make sure that we have those criteria met by using absorption first. Home theater acoustics, absorption first, diffusion second. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.